rugged coastlines, industrial cities, rural landscapes and historic castles. Ulster has a wealth of places to see and explore. For centuries, the comings and goings of folk between Ulster and Scotland have left their mark on our landscape and people. I'm Lolly Spence, and in this short series, I'll be visiting some of the most stunning visitor attractions Northern Ireland has to offer, many of them steeped in Ulster Scots history. I'm in Belfast, the capital and largest city of Northern Ireland, which stands on the banks of the River Lagan in East Ulster. Belfast's location makes it an ideal gateway to Northern Ireland, and the city is a perfect starting point for sightseeing tours and road trips. Belfast itself has many historic landmarks with Ulster Scots connections, and I'm going to show you a few. The city of Belfast, as we know it today, really owes its existence to two industries, linen and shipbuilding. Now, if you'd been standing on this very site just over 200 years ago, it would have looked very different because this was the site of Belfast's first ever shipyard. Today, this beautiful building stands on the site. It's the office of Belfast Harbour Commissioners. It's been here since 1854, and I'm lucky enough to be getting a look inside. This is one of the glorious reception rooms in the Belfast Harbour Commissioner's Office and I've come here to have a look at this portrait. This man in the portrait is William Ritchie, considered by many to be the father of shipbuilding in Belfast. He came across here from Saltcoats, which is an Ayrshire on the west coast of Scotland, in 1791 and he realised that there was not a shipbuilding industry in Belfast. So he returned then with his brother Hugh and 10 Scotsmen and they established the first shipyard here on this site, on the River Lagan. It's astonishing that from those humble beginnings, Belfast developed the largest shipyard in the world and went on to employ hundreds of thousands of people in the years to come. By the 19th century, shipbuilding was really thriving in Belfast and steam power was beginning to replace sailing ships. Two Belfast-born brothers, Thomas and George McTeer, who were actually of Scottish ancestry, they co-founded the Belfast to Glasgow Steamship Company. And within a few years, they were offering an Ulster Scots service from Belfast to Glasgow four times a week. I'm leaving Sailor Town and crossing the Lagan to visit one of the newest jewels in Belfast's crown. This area where we're standing today is known as Queen's Island or Titanic Quarter and it's home to apartments, film studios and this magnificent building, the world's largest Titanic themed museum, built on the exact spot where Titanic herself was built. This magnificent building is Titanic Belfast. It opened in 2012, which was the centenary of the loss of Titanic. With nine exhibition areas housed over four floors, it has rapidly become one of Northern Ireland's most popular visitor attractions. Titanic Belfast today stands right at the heart of the historic shipyard of Harland and Wolfe, which was the largest in the world. Harland and Wolfe built ships for the White Star Line, including three famous sister ships, Titanic, Britannic and Olympic. Titanic sat just here on this slipway behind me in the early 1900s. After her launch, tragically, she foundered on her maiden journey across the Atlantic in April 1912. On board at that time was the chief naval architect, Thomas Andrews. His family were of Ulster Scots stock, 
They had come over here in the early 1600s. As part of the visitor experience, you can even step on board Titanic's original tender vessel. This is the SS Nomadic, which was built like Titanic and Olympic for the White Star Line by Harland and Wolfe. When Titanic sailed into Cherbourg in France to collect her first and second class passengers, she was too big to get into the harbour. So this tender collected the first and second class passengers and brought them out to the ship. This is the only White Star vessel left anywhere in the world today. My next port of call is an impressive archive centre nearby which is an essential visit for genealogists. The Public Records Office of Northern Ireland, or PRONI as we call it, is home to our official records and archives. There are millions of documents in here, dating back centuries. Cronai's rich archives offer the perfect starting point for people from near and far wanting to start their own journey of discovery into their Ulster Scots roots. When you come to Cronai to research your family tree or your Ulster Scots history, you often come across geographical land divisions, which we call townlands and some of the names are very musical and very descriptive. They're quite often Ulster Scots names as opposed to standard English names, but a lot of those names have been celebrated by a local poet, John Hewitt, in this gorgeous poem, which has been recreated on the wall of the front atrium of Pronai. It's called Townland Names, and it begins, I take my stand by the Ulster names, each clean, hard name like a weathered stone, Torella, Ross Trevor are flickering flames. The names I mean are the Moy, Malone, Straban, Sleeve Gullion and Port Glenown. Even suppose that each name were freed from Legends Ivy and History's Moss, there'd be music still inside Carrick a Reed. Though men forget it's the rock across the track of the salmon from Isle and Ross. The names of a land show the heart of a race. They move on the tongue like the lilt of a song. You say the name and I see the place. Drumbo, Dungannon, Annalong, Barony, Townland. We cannot go wrong. I've shown you just a few of the visitor attractions in Belfast with Ulster Scots connections. Another possible destination is the Linen Hall Library where you can explore the Gibson Collection, one of the world's largest archives of material relating to the Scottish poet Robert Burns. A visit to the Ulster Museum is also a must. It has a diverse collection of exhibitions relating to history, the natural sciences and art. And there's the Discover Ulster Scots Centre, which is public research spaces and exhibitions highlighting the long-standing cultural and linguistic links between Scotland and Ulster. Whichever of these attractions you come and visit, you won't be disappointed and they'll inspire you to uncover your own Ulster Scots connections.